it's Kathy Cassidy. I'm here to read you another chapter of Love from Lexi. And this time today it's chapter 30, so we really are closing in on the end of the story. And um, I hope all of you are coping okay. I hope you're managing to stay in touch with your friends and maybe not go completely stir crazy. Um, I think we all have our moments, but hopefully the chapters are a little bit of escapism for some of us. So um, I'm going to start as usual by showing you the, the um, little bit in between the chapters. And today it's the text message that Lexi has sent to the rest of the band, um, or to some of the band, and it's to Sasha Kaminsky, Jake Cook and Dylan Hayes. And the text message says, urgent, please come to the railway carriage as soon as you can. We'll explain all, but I need your help. Sasha, can you bring makeup? Dylan, can you bring Marley's stage clothes? Jake, just come down fast as you can. Lexi. And chapter 30 is called Pirates. By the time Sasha and Dylan get to the old railway carriage, Marley has already gone up to the house with Jake, who promises he'll make sure Marley showers, washes his hair and eats some breakfast. We bumped into Charlene's boyfriend again in the park last night, I told Jake. Let's just say, say things did not pan out well. We need a miracle here. Don't panic, Jake says. I'm on it. I tell Sasha and Dylan the same edited version of events. Dylan is not impressed. What's wrong with him? The youngest Bob brother growls. I knew he was in trouble when he didn't come home, but today of all days. Sasha just opens up her makeup case on the counter. There are more pots and tubes and brushes of colour than I have ever seen outside of an art room. It's what I want to do when I leave school, she explains. If the singing thing doesn't work out, obviously. How bad is it? Bad, I tell her. The eyes pretty much swollen shut. Jake is going to try putting a bag of frozen peas on it, but I didn't think I don't think anything will make it go away in time for the gig. Are his hands still okay? Dylan checks. He can still play? Still sing? Maybe we can stand him at the back. Maybe. Or brush his fringe down or make him wear an eye patch. That might work, Sasha says. An eye patch like a pirate. You can get away with all kinds on stage, can't you? What if we throw the odd striped t-shirt and bandana into the mix? It wouldn't be so very far from our black and red theme and nobody would think twice about the eye patch then. I grin. Sasha, you might just be a genius. Okay, stripy t-shirts and bandanas, I'll start ringing round. By 10 o'clock, when the others start arriving, half of them clutching random stripy t-shirts, Marley is sitting on the railway carriage sofa with a bag of frozen peas held to his face. No shouting today, he promises as the others pile in. My head hurts too much. I'm sorry I got so wound up last night. You were right, Samir, all of you. I was stressed and strung out. I was being an idiot. It's a skill I have. I was just so tired, Samir says sadly. I'm sorry too. With good relations restored, Sasha sets to work tweaking things so that everybody has a touch of pirate style. A red spotted bandana here, a stripy top there, and we are good to go. Sasha ties a big felt pirate, tries a big black felt pirate hat belonging to her little brother on Marley. But everyone decides it's too distracting for the lead guitarist, so Dylan gets it instead. Little clumps of players start up. George, Happy and Romy going over the string sections, Bex and Dylan working on the bass, Lee playing random trumpet solos just for fun. Weaving through it all, Sasha goes from person to person checking makeup. A cool pirate girl in a red dress with added petticoats, her blonde hair back combed to within an inch of its life and tied up with a spotted bandana. George gets a fake cartoon moustache and Lee and Dylan a swipe of cheeky Jack Sparrow eyeliner. Romy looks so different, older and way more confident. Even Beck submits to the paint box and brushes and emerges looking like the fiercest pirate of all. 
As for Marley, he seems a whole lot better than he had first thing. Showered and fed with homeopathic arnica cream gently rubbed into his face and ribs as prescribed by Jake's mum, he looks as if he's just walked off the set of Pirates of the Caribbean in his striped top and skinny jeans and bandana and pirate patch. You can't see the black eye at all. Nobody would even guess it was there. OK, he says, thanks to Lexi, Sasha, Jake and my long-suffering little brother, this crisis has been averted. We're back on track. A bit behind schedule, but still in the game, and that's what matters. There's time for one more run-through of the set before we have to head over to the park for our sound check to get ready. He hands something small and jangly to Jake, who takes it, looking puzzled. OK, he adds, a last-minute addition to the lineup. Jake is going to be playing Triangle, as he promised all those weeks ago. You've been amazing behind the scenes, Jake. We couldn't have done this without you, but all the tech stuff is taken care of for today's gig and I didn't want you to miss out on the limelight. So anyone got a spare stripy top for Jake? Your little sister gave me the triangle, so I know you've been practicing. Jake groans and tries to wriggle out of it, but he's outvoted. Okay, the whole set, once more, from the top. Lee's ear-splitting trumpet call erupts, and we're off. So that's the end of chapter 30 and if you tune in for tomorrow's chapter you will get to hear how the festival goes. Uh, I really hope you're going to enjoy it because we're getting to, yeah, we're getting to the really cool bits. Um, thanks so much for sticking with the story this long and I hope you're going to enjoy the rest. I will see you soon. Take care till then.